Welcome to This Week in Security with our roundup of the most important stories of the week affecting the UK security for private and public sector organisations. Our editor's top stories of this week. Why Virgin's 800,000 router vulnerability is just the tip of the iceberg. BT customers hacked by fake bill emails. Is arming frontline police the next logical step in protection? And Robocop takes to the roads. Plus how Met Police are fighting back against Microsoft support scams and why doing business in China has just got a whole lot tougher and more expensive. Now we'll also have news on a, a special report that we're about to issue on a major ransomware attack and news about our own launch at IFSEC 2017. Internet service provider Virgin Media has a major online security risk that affects over 800,000 of their routers and they're now in the process of contacting customers to notify them. This cyber attack vulnerability in Virgin Superhub 2 was discovered by consumer protection body Witch during an investigation of connected devices in the home. So far this weakness has not been exploited but it's not just Virgin that's susceptible. Several other operators have routers that have exactly the same flaw including BT and Sky. In December last year, both TalkTalk Talk and KCOM confirmed that customers' routers had lost connectivity due to Mirai malware, a type of cyber attack that exploits weak default passwords. The root of the problem is the fact that internet service providers have issued routers with short, simple passwords for years, and consumers weren't made aware that they should change them. Subscribers to all the main ISP services, not just Virgin, are now being advised to change their Wi-Fi and router admin passwords immediately to improve their security. Now, this month saw BT fall victim to hackers sending their customers fake emails, attempting to trick them into automatically downloading a banking malware known as Drydex. Once installed, this virus is designed to steal personal information such as usernames and passwords, with the goal of getting into bank accounts and stealing cash. BT is urging anyone who receives one of these emails not to click on any links or be panicked by such messages. Instead, go to the BT website directly and log in to view any bills. Or simply phone BT using a number that you trust to verify authenticity. And do not use any phone number sent in the suspect email. Um, frontline police officers patrolling across England and Wales has moved a step closer to reality, despite calls to maintain our tradition of unarmed officers. This discussion is now underway amongst the UK's police chiefs with the goal of countering the threat of terrorism. Following the Manchester and London bridge attacks, a paper has been written for the National Police Chiefs Council which looks at how to increase armed police numbers to deal with a crisis. Already there are moves to increase weaponisation of UK police as of the 20th of June. The Met Commissioner Cressida Dick announced her decision to equip an additional 1,800 officers across the Met with tasers to better protect the public and officers from the threat of violent incidents. This will bring the number of UK officers carrying tasers up to over 6,400. Most officers in Great Britain are still unarmed, but police sources say this long-standing principle is under pressure after four terrorist attacks in just three months and a rapid rise in knife crime, which has risen by over 24% in just the last 12 months. The NPCC's paper suggests that officers who are currently unarmed would get about two weeks of training on how to handle a firearm. But this is much less training than the six weeks received by a fully qualified armed officer. The upside to this option is police chiefs might get officers volunteering, boosting the numbers of those who can handle a gun in a crisis more quickly. Although cost and practicality create complications, handguns cost £500 each and time off for training would further stretch officers' dwindling numbers. In a recent survey, the Metropolitan Police Federation found just over half of their officers said they would carry a gun routinely if asked to do so. However, one in ten said they would rather quit than carry a firearm.
Now, just last month, we saw Dubai announce that they would have the world's first robotic police officers. And now they've taken another big step into the future by announcing the world's first self-driving police cars. These autonomous miniature patrol vehicles will be able to scan criminals using special biometric software that can identify wanted suspects. If ground surveillance isn't enough, the vehicle also comes with an aerial drone that can scan crowds or individuals from above. Both the car and the drone will be linked to the police command room for monitoring. Dubai police plan to use the driverless vehicles by the end of the year, using them in various tourist areas to boost security and hunt for suspicious activity. Now, a type of scam that involves pretending to be legitimate IT support that tricks users into paying unnecessary fees to solve fake problems has grown in international scale. Recently, Wired magazine pointed to research that indicates this is netting fraudsters over $75 million per annum. Computer software service fraud is the third most common type of crime reported to action fraud. The service received nearly 35,000 such reports in the last 12 months alone. Now, the good news is that the UK's Met Police are fighting back and scored a significant success. Four people have been arrested last week in the UK for pretending to be Microsoft IT support staff. This follows a two-year investigation into scams involving calls from such fraudsters by the City of London Police and Microsoft, who worked together to tackle the problem. Microsoft has published online advice for how to avoid being scammed and what to do if you suspect you've been tricked in the past. Microsoft wants to inform users of their software that they will never make cold calls or use tech support pop-ups on any websites. Now, thinking of doing business in China, well, life's got a whole lot more complicated and expensive. Due to new cyber security laws that came into effect this month, organizations deemed to be network operators or be providing infrastructure critical services to the Chinese economy will be subject to particularly close scrutiny. According to KPMG, this network operator classification could include banking institutions, security and insurance companies, providers of cyber security products and services, as well as enterprises that have websites providing network services. In other words, just about any company operating in China. Under the new legislation, any information collected on individuals in China must be stored on servers within the country. Penalties for breaching the law are severe, including suspension of all business activities and fines of over £100,000. Now, there's just been a major ransomware attack following last month's attack on the NHS. Uh, we'll be doing a special report, uh, so please link to this uh, on our website or via YouTube, and we'll give you all the countermeasures that you need to take in order to protect your organisation. And finally, some news about Security Expert Online. We enjoyed a very successful launch at IFSEC 2017. Uh, there was an opening address by Jeff Little on the first day, and we had well over 300 people register interest in the channel. On top of this, uh, the online presence was actually initiated three weeks ahead of our launch, and we've been averaging over 1,000 views a week, and over 20% of those are unique visitors. The social media group has now extended to well over 1,000 followers across our LinkedIn and Twitter channels and YouTube. So we're well and truly ready for commercial sponsors and advertisers. All the information is on our website. There's also a free marketplace and during July, if you register your company properly on our free marketplace, we will give you a one minute video news PR feature. Uh, so any PR that you have, you can have converted on this news channel uh, free of charge. So that's all for now. Uh, remember to stay subscribed through YouTube, Twitter, or best of all, our website. And together, online, we'll make the world a safer place. Bye for now.